Good happy Monday morning. It is Monday, October 14, 2024. It is also Columbus Day and Indonesia People's Day as well. It is me, Riley King, and welcome to WRMK Morning News right here on WRMK News Radio. We got a jam-packed broadcast to get to this Monday, so let's begin right now. First up, Manchester hosts one of the largest chocolate events in the U.S. Let's take a listen to that report. One of the largest chocolate events in the country, Melted Hearts in Manchester today. Here's a sampling of the sights and sounds at the Chocolate Expo. You go through the tunnel, which is going through Elm Street here with all kinds of lights and unexpected surprises here. It's not just locally because so many people are in the area for the leaf peeping. Chocolatiers from New Jersey. This is Clyde of Clyde's Cupcakes based in New Hampshire. Over here, another in New Hampshire from one of our Massachusetts based bakeries. This company here makes terrific. They're from Connecticut. This is a Connecticut based vendor over here. This is a diverse farm from New York State. They're from upstate New York from the Finger Lakes uh, area. I'm with Channel 9 right now. We still have a wide range of food products here. With every piece of chocolate, hopefully you'll get your wish too. With every occasion, you always have wishes. like a fun event right there. Who doesn't like chocolate? Yum, yum, yum. I'll need to check that out next year. Dozens of cats and kittens rescued from the Carolinas are now in New Hampshire. Let's take a listen to that report from WMUR News 9. And on top of that, dozens of cats and kittens rescued from the Carolinas will soon be up for adoption in New Hampshire. Flying for Animal Rescue helped those cats get to safety. It flew 33 of them north, and they are now up for adoption in New Hampshire. So if you're interested or in the market for a cat, you might want to go and get one. New Hampshire municipalities still recruiting poll workers for November election. Let's take a listen to that report from WMUR News 9. In New Hampshire, towns and cities are busy with election day preparations, including hiring some more poll workers. WMUR's Isabel Litters is in Londonderry, where the town clerk says they're in pretty good shape. Here in Londonderry, officials say they expect to see 16,000 voters on election day. That requires 40 to 60 poll workers each shift trained in specific procedures. Londonderry specifically has built up a staff list to cover those positions, but other places are still looking for people. First-time poll workers must undergo training, and that's another hurdle since municipalities are running out of time to get people through that process. The town clerk here says anyone 17 and older can sign up to be a poll worker at a location where they're registered to vote. That work can include anything from being a greeter to helping register voters on election day. These volunteer positions are a way to see how elections work up close. It's an exciting process to be part of, and it's democracy at its best. And you really feel like you're part of the bigger picture, and you see that every vote counts and is so vitally important in our great state. Farrell says part of the training is ensuring poll workers know to remain nonpartisan and focused on their civic duty at the polls. If you are interested in getting involved in the election day process, you can go to the Secretary of State's website to find out more about election opportunities. In Londonderry, Isabel Litters, WMUR, News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report. Two people dead from suspected carbon monoxide incident in Bedford, authorities say. Let's take a listen to that report from WMUR News 9. We just spoke with the state fire marshal. He says that it's likely carbon monoxide poisoning that killed two adults, one man and one woman, who were found dead in their home this afternoon. 
The Bedford Fire and Police Departments responded to a home on Pulpit Road at around 4 p.m. Sunday. A family member came to check on their uh, relatives and found them both, uh, they believe, to be deceased in the home. The state fire marshal says emergency crews attempted to resuscitate the two people for 30 minutes, but were not successful. They found elevated levels of carbon monoxide in the home, uh, so they called our office to assist with the investigation. Toomey says they believe the two residents likely died from carbon monoxide poisoning sometime earlier today. We probably respond to three or four carbon monoxide related deaths a year, I would say, as an average. Toomey says in this case, it could have been the heating, the stove, or even the car that caused the elevated levels of carbon monoxide in the home. So they'll be checking each one to determine the source. Now, just like fire detectors, you can also have smoke detectors. You can also have carbon monoxide detectors. Those can help you protect yourself and your family from accidental exposure. Tomorrow, Toomey says they will be conducting the autopsy at the medical examiner's office to determine the official cause of death. Live in Bedford, Isabella Jurist, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report. New Hampshire Fish and Game res rescues multiple hikers as thousands pack the trail on long holiday weekend. Let's take a listen to that report from WMUR News 9. They came for views like this. Instead, they got crowds like this. With Columbus Day weekend, the trails are absolutely mobbed. There's hikers everywhere. It was just chaos. Once we got to the top where it was like kind of bottlenecking, and people were just shoving their way through. Um, it was completely unsafe. Tamara Bro, a seasoned hiker from Milford, says the artist bluff trail isn't difficult, but the crowds made it more dangerous than anything she's experienced before. I couldn't help but think, but like somebody's gonna have to get rescued. In fact, multiple hikers were rescued this weekend. Fishing Game says some were injured. Others unprepared, including seven coming down Cannon Mountain's Basin Cascade Trail on Saturday night. I lost trail and we're basically stuck in a, um, a drainage in a brook um, with no lights, no water, and extremely cold. Because while thousands come to see the fall foliage in the mountains, it's already winter with wind chills in the single digits. People just aren't bringing headlights, they're not bringing water, and they're just not prepared for the cold weather and what they're encountering out in the mountains right now. We saw people wearing slippers, sandals, people wearing short shorts. While Fishing Game says it can't man every trail, Tamara wishes more could be done to manage the crowds. It's just sad. And like there's trash along the side of the road, um, along the path and everything. It was, it was terrible. Now, another challenge this weekend was the traffic. Fishing Game says 93 was so congested, it took crews over an hour to even start up the trail to rescue a woman on Franconia Ridge. They're asking everyone who hits the trails to come prepared, bring winter gear, water, headlamps, food, and a map in case you lose cell service. Okay, and there you go on that report. Good information right there. And we're going to switch gears now. Let's take a look at some national news. U.S. sending anti-missile defense system to Israel. Let's take a listen to that report from ABC News. New Lego Star Wars sets. Save the galaxy. Or don't. Choose the light side. Choose the dark side. Set sold separately. Smart devices and set dressing not included. All right, overseas now, and word tonight that the U.S. is sending an anti-missile defense system to Israel and deploying 100 U.S. troops to operate it. The system is intended to help Israel fend off any future attacks from Iran. Let's bring in ABC's Matt Gutman. He's live from Tel Aviv tonight. Matt, what more are you learning about this new development? Rachel, the Pentagon is sending a clear message with this deployment that it's working in lockstep with Israel to help it fend off any additional possible Iranian ballistic missile strike and that it's working with Israel to help it calibrate its response to that historic ballistic missile strike from October 1st. Over 180 bus-sized missiles 
fired into Israel and more of those missiles penetrating Israel's air defenses than many here expected. One reason that Israel has vowed such a ferocious response. Now, I'm told it'll be less, at least four days before that missile battery is operational. And remember, Rachel, those 100 troops are just a fraction of the total 40,000 U.S. troops operating in the Middle East right now. But this is the first time that U.S. troops will be on the ground and operational in Israel since just after October 7th. And it's happening as this conflict between Israel and Hezbollah is intensifying. Hezbollah launching more attacks today than in any day since the war began, including a drone attack just about 30 miles from where we are right now, in which Israel says about 70 people were wounded, Rachel. As you reported, Matt, this will be the first time that U.S. troops will be on the ground and operational in Israel in months. Matt, thank you for your reporting. Okay, and there you go on that report. And we are going to switch gears now, and let's go into your weather right now. And let's take a look at the weather and see how your weather is looking like on this Monday. Today, rain early, then remaining cloudy with showers in the afternoon. High 49, winds north at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chance of rain, 90%. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 37, winds west northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And tomorrow, intervals of clouds and sunshine, high 54, winds west northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Currently cloudy in 44 degrees. Expect rain around 6 o'clock a.m. And we're going to switch gears and go into your traffic now. Let's take a look at your morning commute and see how that traffic is looking like. On 93 heading into Massachusetts, you got a fairly nice smoothing ride there. 293, nice smoothing ride as well. 93 around hooks at Bow. And a Concord, nice smooth sailing ride as well. 393, nice smooth sailing ride as well. Report you got a fairly nice smooth sailing ride with some medium paced traffic. Route 16 of the Spotsling, nice smooth sailing ride, a little bit of medium paced traffic there. 95, nice smooth sailing ride as well. 101, not too bad of a ride as well. And Merrimack, not too into that border, Massachusetts, not too bad of a ride there as well. That's a look at your traffic, and remember the rain is coming down, so there could be some ponding on those roadways, so take it easy there. And let's take a look at your sports now. In sports, New England Patriots, they had a game yesterday, and the final score of the New England Patriots game yesterday was Houston Texans, 41, and New England Patriots, 21. Houston Texans won the game yesterday. Houston Texans are 5-1, and New England Patriots are 1-2. Five. Next game for Patriots will be on Sunday at 9.30 a.m. against the Jaguars, Sunday, October 20th. Let's go Patriots. Hopefully they can win that game. Celtics, they had a game last night, and the final score of the Boston Celtics game last night was Boston Celtics 115 and Toronto Raptors 111. Celtics won the preseason game last night. They're in their preseason right now. Next preseason game will be tomorrow at 7 o'clock p.m. against the Raptors. Let's go Celtics. Hopefully they can win tomorrow night's preseason game. And Bruins, they play this afternoon at 1 o'clock p.m. against the Florida Panthers at the TD Garden. Let's go Boston Bruins. Hopefully they can win the game this afternoon against Florida Panthers. And that does it for this edition of your WRMK Morning News right here on WRMK News Radio. Thank you for tuning in and listening. Have a wonderful Monday, everyone. Goodbye.